Hey, do you like playing with paint, paper, glue, scissors, inks, dyes, gel plates? My name's Lee Elks and I love to play around with all of those things and create mixed media art and make junk journals. So on that note, let the creating begin. Hi, it's Lee. Thanks for joining me again. I'm going to do some pr jelly printing today. So I've been inspired by Vicki Reed, who does some beautiful prints using uh, masks and leaves and um, so I thought I'd have a go. I hadn't used my gel plate for a little while so I've just conditioned it by making printing a couple of backgrounds so it's, it's working quite well now so I'm going to put um, a couple of things over the top of some of these. So I'm going to use this one first, this purpley one. So I think something yellow and green would look nice. I'm just going to apply a little bit of paint, some white, doesn't matter about this leftover paint that's on here, that'll just come up eventually. I've got um, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Just needs, um, you don't need a lot of paint to do this. Got some Australian Yellow Green, which is a Matisse paint. Beautiful yellow when it's mixed with, with white. So I'm going to spread that around. You can see how lovely that colour is. I'm not worrying about it being too well mixed. I want it patchy. And I'm going to lay some of these leaves. I've also got some dandelion heads, the ones that haven't opened yet. So got that one. Pop that in there. These gum leaves. I was trying to get this done fairly quickly while the leaves were still nice and soft but they've stiffened up a bit. I'm going to see what happens with that. Um, I'm really going to have to push down because those leaves aren't flat. But it's only a piece of paper isn't it? Ooh, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out. I need to really push the paper down so it goes around the leaves. So what will happen by doing this is um, the paint is going to lift off, uh, you know, from around the leaves and then when I pick the leaves up there will be a residue of paint still left on there that we can get a, a ghost print from. Okay, so let's see how that's worked out. That's not too bad. A little bit disappointed with the colour of paint. I thought this yellowy colour might be a bit more vibrant. Um, might be something to do with the purple in there I think. So purple and yellow make a browny green sort of colour which looks like what that is there. Anyway we'll take them off and there's our ghost print sitting there. So this one was made with uh, magenta, a bit of cad red and some yellow. That's not too bad. I don't think the background was dark enough. So I want to try that um, blue one again but the only liquid blue I have is cerulean so what I'm going to do is mix some black with it to darken it. I'm hoping that will make that a nice dark blue. doesn't look like it's really the colour I was wanting. Maybe a little bit of the magenta or the bright pink in there. Might brighten it up a bit. I'm not sure about that. So I've got some Payne's Grey. But it's a heavy body paint, so. Okay, it's a better blue. It's still not what I'm after, but it's better than it was. And what I think I'm going to do is um, print on a couple of these yellowy orange ones uh, with some blue. This colour which is 
mint green. It's pretty too much paint. Put a little bit of the cerulean blue in there. A little bit of white. And yellow. I'll use the yellow green. The green yellow. Yellow green. turned out quite nice. Okay, I should leave that on there and see if I can get a bit more of that paint off. I'll just use this one. And that turned out quite alright. And remove them now. So this is the same setup. So I'm just going to go back over it again with the ghost print or the texture of the leaves that's still on the plate. Let's see if that adds to it. I'm not sure if it's an improvement or not. So we'll do some purple and some black. And this time I'll put a little bit of magenta in there. This is quinacridone magenta. Mix them together, see how they turn out. This is looking nice. Okay, so I'm going to put my leaves back on again. Just got another little bit there. And I'm going to go over the top of this one. Pressing down around all the leaves to transfer that paint that's on the plate up onto this piece of paper that already has that yellowish background on it. Well that one's nice. Okay, so let's do a bit more on this one. Just to get a little bit more of that paint off before I do the final lift. So that's not too bad. It's slightly more interesting than the piece of paper was before. So I'm going to get these off. You can see the nice ghost pattern is in there still. You can let that dry. Uh, never use a heat gun on your gel pad, on your gel plate. I um, heard someone using, saying they were drying their paint with a heat gun. And I think you can really damage your plate by doing that. So not a good thing to do. It's quite warm here today so that's going to dry fairly quickly. Still a little bit wet there. Okay, so I'm going to put white, some of this yellow green, um, and a little bit of yellow ochre. And then just a couple of drops of this. Just want to make a nice creamy yellow sort of colour. And I'm going to put my paper on there and I'm going to leave that for a few minutes because I want it to really pull up that all the stuff that's on the plate. And I'm just going to leave that sit there and come back to it. Okay, so that's been sitting for about three minutes and it looks like it's ready to pull. And I just need to be careful around the edges. It doesn't start tearing the paper. Oh, like that. Maybe it needs to be left a bit longer so it's starting to tear in a few different places so I'm going to leave that a bit longer. It's okay down in this corner but everywhere else it's not. 
So I've left that a bit longer. We'll see what happens now. It's going to pull from this way. It's tearing, I don't know, just a little bit on the edge there. dull isn't it? I'm not sure that I like that. So that can be there for a bit more work to be done to it. Um, I think it's the colour underneath that's the problem. So if I think about it for a while, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. So this one needs a bit more work on it. This one is horrible. So let's try and get something to go over them. So I'm going to use some white. And I'm going to use some um, Azo, Nickel Azo Gold. And then I've got this um, red, red Gold. A couple of drops of that. And I'll just see how that turns out. Mm, looks like a nice combination. Okay, let's see how this goes. So I'm just using my fingers to line this up with the edge of the plate. Still not very bright. Definitely has to be the colour that's underneath it because it was quite bright on the plate. So it doesn't matter something to build on if it's not what we want. It's definitely an improvement from the way it looked before. Now I'm going to put this one on over the top, get a little bit more onto that before I pull. I'm not really sure. I can't hasn't really done much there, but that's okay. Gonna take the foliage off there now and use another colour to pick it up. So I'm gonna put uh, dark zazine purple, just a few drops, and some magenta. <coughs> nice colour. That's quite pretty. The yellow is just not yellow enough. I wonder why that is. Okay, maybe I need to use a brighter yellow. So that's um, Nicolazzo Gold plus bright yellow, it's called. A little bit of the yellow green. That's nice and bright. But I think it's transparent. And that's maybe why I'm not getting the results that I want. I'm going to use a piece of this paper. That looks nice. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go back to those purples, purpley blue colour. So I've got dioxazine purple, and I've got this dark green. Um, would it need a bit of white in it? Just a drop, I think. Two drops. It's not very dark. 
put away over here for, to dry away from the fan. Well, I'd like to put something like that over the top of that. Build up a layer. A little bit of white. Some of this bright yellow. And a little bit of yellow green. This is the one that I just printed. Let's see how this goes. I really need a, like a blue, like a um, phthalo blue or something like that, I think, to make my dark colour. That's pretty nice. Don't mind it. Put that over there to dry. Yeah. So I've got the ghost print here, which I think I'll just put this on it. See how that goes. Mm. It's not great. Nicolazzo Gold. This is my new favourite colour at the moment. And just one drop of this red. Whoops, a little bit more than one drop there, but never mind. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so that's printed nicely, nice background. And I'm going to put some greens. This one is green light. Then I'm going to use a bit of a couple of drops of yellow, a couple of drops of this yellow green, and a couple of drops of white. I'll just go over the top of this one because it's a little bit dull. Because the ones that work best are the light background with the dark over the top unless you're using uh, opaque light colors over the top that's turned out rather interesting it's it's okay it doesn't look like leaves but it's fine okay so I've got this nice yellow sitting there and I'm trying to think what to put over it I'm gonna make a bluey bluey aqua sort of mix so I'm using some white and some turquoise and a little bit of cerulean blue I'd love to put a bit of purple in that but I'm a bit worried about doing that but then nothing ventured nothing gained Let's put a drop or two. One, two drops. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty. Wow, that purple is so potent. Glad I only put two drops on there. Okay, so let's use a piece of copy paper. It's not too bad, but this just lacks the vibrance that I want. Let me just try something really, really off the wall here. So white, yellow, and some fluoro yellow. I'm gonna put a stencil on it. So I've got a homemade stencil here that's just been cut out of a piece of overhead projector sheet. I'm going to go straight back over the top of this. Now I'm going to get a nice yellow line down the side so I'm quite happy for that. So I'll push that down into the stencil so that I get the yellow from underneath lifts. Quite pretty. So 
I'm going to put something over that. So what should I put? Some of this green turquoise. Okay. I'll try it on this. I can always redo it. Yeah, that looks pretty. I like that. It's not as dark as I wanted, but we're getting there. I'm going to make some dark backgrounds. So I have got some phthalo blue. And a bit of Prussian blue. And what else can I put in there? Mm. Southern Ocean blue, which is also known as Thalo Turquoise. of Queen Magenta onto that. Nice and dark. And I'm just using up some things that I printed off Pixabay some time ago. And I was using them for um, reference photos for paintings so I've got a stack of them, probably about a ream of the paper so that's nice and dark, it's exactly what I wanted okay so let's go for the magenta again and this time I'll add some just some uh, ultramarine blue just use those two colours together and to make a nice dark purple in colour. That's actually a photo that I took of Mol uh, well it's Alex Headland, which is one of the beaches here. Mount Coolum in the distance there. Another good one. I'll put a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of Quinn uh, Nicolazzo gold, gold. See what happens. That's nice. Might get a bit more of that phthalo green back, the Southern Ocean blue, I should say. Spread some of that around and add just a touch of white. That's nice, pretty, like that. It does have a blob of the green right in the middle of it, so I'm just going to add some white to that and just mix it with the existing paint. It's still on the, right, on the, the plate. And I've, what I've done is cut out a couple of butterfly masks, not butterflies, dragonflies. I saw um, Vicky Reed doing this. I've watched, binge watched her videos in the last few months because I really love how she can get these gorgeous, vibrant prints. And um, so I've been watching, watching what she does with great interest. Okay, so I will now put a little bit of stenciling on those uh, backgrounds. So I'm going to use stencils that I've made myself. So I've got this one. It's 
So that was made with a piece of overhead projector sheet and what I did was um, draw. I just doodled all over it basically and then I scanned it and removed the background in an app on the computer and then put it into Cricut and cut it out in Cricut. So I was really happy with the way that turned out. I've named it Film Strippy because it looks like strips of film in some places. Okay, so I'm going to mix some more of that turquoise, phthalo turquoise and white together this time. Oops. I think I've got too much paint there. So I'm going to put the stencil on. Then I'm going to use a piece of paper to get rid of the excess paint. So I'm going to just to go that way. This is just going to pick up all the um, bits that are down inside the stencil. Interesting in itself. Pull that off. Still looks like there's a lot of paint on there but we'll see how it goes so we've got green there and that would go nicely over yellowy or reddy colored thing background so i'm going to put it over that it's a bit subtle might not have taken enough paint off still got that lump of paint there Let's try it over this one. I don't know, these people, they are the experts, they make it look so easy. It's still pretty subtle. Um, okay, what am I going to do? I need to get that off the plate. So what I'll make is, I'll just do some more on this I think. Why don't I put the stencil back on? and put something else over the top of it. Um, how about black? Just a little bit of black. I think that's going to blend with the paint that's already on there because I used way too much paint. And some of these paints I'm using aren't heavy, uh, heavy bodied paints, so they're um, they're not spreading out real well. I haven't used them for a long time. So should I do that on there or should I go for something else? A nice light one here. I'll put this black on over that. So just using my fingers on the edge of the print so I can line it up. So you get get the um, stencil in about the same place. That doesn't look too bad. Needs to, something else to lift it off. So, got this fluoro purple. I'm going to put some of that on there. And a bit of this magenta. Just a little. It's a bit of white. Just a touch. That's better. Nice colour. And I'm going to use the same stencil. I want that bit there in. that print that didn't work properly to get that paint out of the stencil and then the residue will go on to something else. That's pretty good. 
and that's what I'm left with. I would like to put some white and a little bit of yellow green. another stencil that I drew and then printed on my with my Cricut. So I put that over here. I quite like that. Take that off and just get rid of that excess paint. a dog with breakfast. If you're ever wondering what a dog's breakfast looks like, that's it. I think I'm putting my um, weight off with baby wipe because I want to um, start getting my dragonflies onto some of these prints. So I've got a few dark ones, that's what my plan is to put them over a dark one so I can use my beautiful light colours. I've got one, two, three, four, five dark backgrounds. Now I've got the ones that I just printed but they're not dry. And that's another one I can use and that's another one. So they would look really nice I think with the dragonfly on there. So I'm going to get rid of the colours I'm not going to be using and give myself some room on this desk. Okay so I'm a little bit more organised now and I have my prints ready to go to get their extra bits on and because I'm going over a dark background I think I need to put a fair bit of that white in. This is way too much paint, I can see that already. Let's see what happens. see how we go. So one but one dragonfly there, another one there, and another one up there. And I have a spiral, because Vicky used a spiral too, and these are just circles that I've cut out of um, Yupo paper. Put them on. Okay, so this is the first one I'm going to try, so let's see how it goes. So that's what I got. I'm quite happy with that. It's way better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so there's enough paint still on there to, I think, maybe get a little bit on this. It didn't make a great deal of difference. It's going to have an, another coat, I'm sure of it. So I'll take these pieces off and then I can take my ghost print. Don't they? That looks pretty that way. out nice. Pretty happy with that. Okay, now let's do another one. So I'll go some white, some azo, nickel azo gold, some yellow green, and a little bit of magenta. No, don't use magenta. Maybe just a bit of this yellow. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Good combination. Don't want to mix it up too much. This time I'm going to put this thing on there. I'm going to put that one there.
put some of these circles in and overlap them. Put the baby one down the bottom. I'm going to use this to press a bit of texture in there. Okay, we'll go with this one. So getting my fingers on the edge of that printed area. Press down. with that. I really wish that had some white in it, that would have been nice. So take them off and then I can pull my ghost print. Got this piece of um, grease proof paper. Put that on over this. Grease proof? Oh, uh, tracing paper I think this is. quite nice but it's a little bit indistinct. What I'd like to do is get a nice greeny coloured one onto this piece of paper. So I'm going to put some white on there. A little bit of this green and some yellow green. And a little bit of Nicolazzo gold. I think that's enough mix it all together. I don't think there's enough green in there. I'll just put a couple more drops of that green in. Well, you can use any sort of paints to make these gel prints with, but I really think that the, um, the flow paints are so much easier to handle. Spread around much easier. Okay, you're staying there now. That one can be on the edge. I'm just going to put some more of these circles around. Some smaller ones here. bubble wrap on there. Yep. And here. Okay, so I'm going with this one. Let's see how this one goes. And that's nice. Nice and dramatic. I can choose another piece of the rice paper just to see if I can get anything else off there. Because I want to use that um, Southern Ocean Blue again and some white on this one and I'm going to put it onto this. I want to get as much of that yellow off as I can. Not too much came off so it must be pretty dry. Okay so let's go this and I'll be careful with it. Make sure I don't get an explosion coming out of it like I did last time. It's going to spread a bit of that around. Now I'll put the white on. This makes a beautiful colour. And if it does pick up that yet bit of that yellow, well that's fine. Okay, back with, with the dragonflies. You gotta work pretty fast otherwise the paint will dry before you get a chance to pull your print. Okay, so finding the edge of my pattern, my printed paper, background I should say, lined it up and press it down. Oh that's nice. Love that. That's turned out really nice. And you know what I'm gonna try and do? 
I know they're in a different place, but I think I'm going to try to pick up the ghost print on that. Let's see how it works out. It's only going to be faint, but I, I reckon that that will benefit from having a bit of this green on it. So I'm going to... My, I was going to say my dragonfly is in the same place, but it's not. It's facing the other way. So it won't matter where it goes down. Okay, hasn't turned out as well as I thought it would, but that was only just a stab in the dark sort of thing. Now I would like to get some metallic paint. Mint green flash, sounds good. This is a colour change. So I'm going to oh, I haven't opened this one. Put that around. And I'm going to work on this one. Um, so put the dragonflies on again. So that looks pretty. And I'm going to put more of this down. Uh, let me think about what I'm doing here. Take that off. Put some down. to use the same piece of paper. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I won't know unless we try. I don't think it's working. It might if I leave it on there so it pulls right right up. I'll just let it sit there for a bit. That'll do. I'll we'll pull it off now. Whatever it happens, happens. So, sort of lost the butterflies a little bit. I'm trying to think of a way to get them back. Um, the dragonflies, I should say. I need them to be like a light colour. So I would have to put paint down, put the dragonflies back on, And then remove the excess paint. Okay. So let's put them back down. Remove that excess paint. Let's have a look what I've got. Lift that on this one. Doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to rub around the dragonflies. I don't want to push them down into the paint too much. Oh, this is turning out better than I thought it would. <laughs> Look at this one. That's nice. Okay, it didn't take enough um, paint off, so I'm going to just use this rice paper so I can get more off one I was still working on. <laughs> and it's this one I'm going to apply these ones to. Okay. 
Okay, fingers crossed. It needs to stay on there for a bit longer. So that was the one that I got before. And then there's that one. And that one. Uh, this one needs some more work on it. This one I'd like to try and get some colour shift paint or something in there. That one turned out really well. This one's really not not very vibrant so that might need to be touched up and then I need to do some more work on that. So that one, that one, that one's good, that one needs work, that one needs work, that one I like, that one I don't mind, that one's good. So you just never know what you're going to get. So that's how that one turned out. So that's not too bad. Don't mind that. It's got the colour shift paint in there. Some white and some thalo. I might put some of this turquoise. Thalo turquoise on there. And a bit of that green gold. Okay. bit more paint off. That's what I'm left behind. Mm. It's a bit underwhelming. It's, it's a background. That's all. Okay. Well I'm going to leave it as that. I need to watch a few more of Vicky's videos and work out how she gets her bright colours over her dark colours, her light colours, because mine don't, that's what happened when I did mine, it's still nice but it's, you can hardly see it, so I want to know what her little trick is, got that one, it's okay, that needs more work. That one's nice. That one's nice. That one needs more. That one's okay. This one needs more. That one, well, that's on tracing paper, so I could do more with that. And then I've got this one, which has got the colour sh shift paint on it. It's okay, but I think it needs it's, needs something. I'm not sure what. Okay, so until next time, take care, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up or subscribe or leave a comment and I'll catch you in the next video. So cheers from Australia. Uru.